Okay, so what's next for the um, for the Galaxy 5 VFO? I talked about this a little bit in the last video, and I saw several different possibilities. Um, the one that really jumps out at me is the, the bit about using it as the VFO for a BitX40 module transceiver. A transceiver is already on the board. I looked around the shack, and I quickly realized that I have one of these almost ready to go. Let me show you. Some of you will recall this is my old 60-meter rig. I have down in here a BitX40 module, and I have up here in the old Heathkit QF1 Q multiplier box, I, I hang my head in shame, an SI5351 uh, and an Arduino. And so I have it set up and I have the software in there so it'll, it will just just work to provide the, uh, the VFO frequency needed to put the... Um, the BitX40 module on 60 meters, I modified the bandpass filter in the BitX40. Don Cantrell provided the uh, the specs. I just had to put three little caps across the, um, um, this is one of them, across the, uh, the capacitors on the bandpass filter <clears throat> in the original circuit. And that was enough to move it to, to 60 meters. So I went in there this morning and told, pull those three caps out. I didn't have to modify the, um, the low pass filter because that could be, uh, that would function. It was originally designed for 40 meters and it would cover 60 meters uh, just fine. So the, the, the low pass filter wasn't modified. The only modification was to the, to the band pass filter. And I have, I have extracted that modification. So out with the SI5351, boo, boo. And in with the Galaxy 5 uh, VFO. That's what we're going to do. Let me just show you. I've, I've, hooked, I've already made up a little patch cord because I have this um, kind of goofy connector here on the box of the, uh, the QF, uh, box of the, uh, the Galaxy 5 VFO. I'll use that same thing, but I need, to, I need a, a BNC connector on the back because when I, when I originally did this, I have speaker out, power in, VFO in, antenna in. So this will just hook up here, hook up here, and as we say, Bob's your uncle. But here's what it looks like inside here. Oh my gosh, I got all this ugly tape still on here. You know, sometimes you use tape to keep the part of the screw from falling off when you're working on it. I'm going to put some light here so you guys can see better. Sorry. Anyway, there you can see the uh, the BitX40 board sitting nicely in there. And I'll put the, uh, the, uh, the, the Galaxy 5 VFO up in this area, up on the top, just so they don't have to move the board around. It'll be easier to put it on there. And so when all is said and done, it'll look like this. And it'll have probably something like that as the frequency readout dial spinning around here up on the front. Anyway, that's the project. That's the plan. I'll keep you guys updated. You know, rarely do you, do you uh, experience such almost instantaneous success, but I put the, uh, the VFO on the, on the top of the box for the bit X. And then I just ran a little patch cord around back to the VFO input. I still even haven't figured out, I haven't, I haven't installed a, a proper power supply for the VFO. So the VFO and the BitX are running off of different, different supplies. And also, I haven't really adjusted the VFO range on the, on the, um, on the, the Galaxy 5 VFO yet. But listen. Some sort of twins at 125 watts. Anyway, 40 CW is coming through. Even though the band's kind of closed, it's like 9.40 in the morning here.
Hey, but hey, it's kind of cool using that old res re resurrected, rebuilt VFO from the Galaxy 5. Okay, I just wanted to give you guys a demonstration of how this thing looks so far. Uh, I just have a little speaker sitting up on top of the box. The box, of course, holds the VidX40 board. The, uh, and here is the Galaxy 5 VFO. I calibrated it this morning. I added a little capacitance so I could tune the entire 40 meter band. And I worked up this real quick and dirty dial calibration thing here so you can follow what we're doing as I tune. But it's nine o'clock in the morning on Friday, on Friday the, uh, the 15th of May, 2020. And uh, let me crank it up, I'll just show you. The band still seems to be pretty open so we should get a lot of signals. loud CW signals. N4 KER calling. Somebody give him a call. N3HEE. -E. Well, sounds like he was calling CQ. He should tune, tune down a bit. Tune down a bit, old man. There's all that digital stuff. FT8 and such. Okay, now we're moving out of the CW band. This is the, the hazardous area here on 7.2. Hmm. I always zip, zip right past them. That's good. Whatever. They already indoctrinated into it because they sitting back waiting for that check in the mail. Oh. It's seven feet above the attachment point of the antenna to the roof, and they have a problem with uh, uh, towers because they don't want cats climbing on them. So uh, an arrangement like that uh, might be something I could get through zoning, although I, I'd, ha I'd ha probably have to apply. Uh, now there's the, the perennial homeowner association discussion. Never ending. Anyway, that completes our tour of the 40 meter band. <laughs> My pointer here is just a piece of black tape. And this is a kind of a post-it note. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Anyway, that's it for, for, for now.